Hey there, everybody. This is Gary from Constricted and Addicted. Right now, I am admiring Clarice, who's my 32% uh, Kalatoa, 32% Jampea, Lavender Albino Reticulated Python. One of the questions that I got asked the other day about my snakes in general are, is, are they safe animals to keep as pets? And I thought, you know, that's a pretty good question. And my immediate answer to that is, is, of course, yes, they are extremely safe pets to keep. It really depends on the keeper, in my, in my opinion. And, and how does the keeper keep the animal? Uh, I tend to handle my animals very frequently. My experience through handling my animals is that they become very associated to touch. So they don't freak out. They don't get jittery. They don't, um, they, it's not like they crave it. But they're not frightened by it. They're not. They're not startled by it. Uh, like anything else, if you touch them and and they're not expecting it, they can uh, be a little bit jittery. But for the most part, I mean, I'm handling handling these animals almost every day, and they've become very socialized. So pretty much, right? Like I can hand my animals off to anybody and I, I don't I don't have a fear that my animal is going to strike or bite anybody. Now the other day I will tell you this um, and this is something I've never experienced before. Uh, I took my Dumeril's boa constrictor out to do some cage cleaning and I put him on the jungle gym and I went to change his water, change his substrate, I went to the kitchen. I took his water dish to the kitchen and as on my way back he was perched on the jungle gym and he took a good swing at me. I mean, it, it caught me completely off guard. Uh, why that happened, I really don't know. I talked to a couple of people about it, and they said it's the time of the year. Now, I've got quite a few male boa constrictors, and I, I've never experienced this. I've never seen it happen. So uh, that was very unexpected to me. But what happened, I, I took it as a fluke incident. I didn't really look at it as, uh, I've got a mean snake, now I can't handle it anymore. What I've done is, is that I've just decided to handle Max more. You know, he hasn't tried to bite me, he hasn't tried to strike at me since that incident. Uh, believe me, I am on guard. But I have to take a look at, there's people that have dogs and sometimes you go to touch them and they might nip you. And it's because maybe they weren't ready for it. And maybe walking by the enclosure, uh, maybe I startled him. I, I, I'm not completely sure. But then I've had other people tell me that, you know, it's possible. <laughs> Clarice is trying to get on the enclosures behind me. That it's the time of year. And it, it could be that, you know, he's looking for a mate. And, and maybe, you know, because he's a, a male boa constrictor, he's getting testy. Well, what I know about retics is that male retics can be testy during the breeding season. And that's the main reason I don't keep male retics. Uh, I've had people tell me one extreme to the other, right? Like uh, they keep male retics and they never experience that problem. And then I've had people tell me that it's very difficult to handle their retics from spring into summer. So I don't know if it's a thing. I, I'm going completely on hearsay. But what I do know is, is that of the, of the male boa constrictors that I have, that was the very first time that I had experienced a snake that has never stricken, never bitten anybody, and, and he took a pretty good swing at me. So, you know, is Max a safe animal? Absolutely. Max is a safe animal. It's like any animal that I handle, I have to be aware, right? And, and although I was not handling Max when he took that swing at me, you know, I, I still have to be aware. Every time I walk by that jungle gym and I have a snake on it, the first thing I think about is, is I ought to be careful walking by it because normally they're perched up there and they're, and it's not that they're like looking for attack or they're looking, but they're just hanging out and they see a very large warm object walk by. I mean, it's kind of like you, you got to be careful. At least that's the way I see it. You got to be careful. So, uh, again, I don't think Max is a dangerous animal. He has not scared me. He did startle me, that is for sure, but he's not a dangerous animal in any way, shape, or form, and he will continue to be held uh, regularly. And here is another animal that shed coconut. Coconut has been 
uh, out and about a lot lately. I've been taking him outside. He loves to get out into the grass. And what I'll do is I'll place coconut at the bottom of the hill and he'll actually crawl all the way to the top. And for me, that's one way that I allow him to get a lot of exercise. He's a, he's a rather large boa constrictor, and I say rather large to me because he's one of the largest snakes that I have. He's just over five feet long, and I like to get him outside so that he can get some enrichment, enjoy the sunshine, and at the same time, what he does is he travels. He loves to crawl. He just loves to crawl, so I let him go at it. And uh, One of the things that I always do when I'm outside and I have my animals on the grass is A, I look for feces. I don't want them crawling through dog stuff or, you know, whatever. Uh, the other thing I look for is gopher holes. And you don't want your snake to get halfway into a gopher hole before you realize that it's in there. So if you take your snake outside, make sure that there's no holes in the ground for the snake to go into. Uh, but anyways, see, again, safe animals. Are snakes safe to keep? And this is an animal that I handle all the time. I really like to think that I know the behaviors of my snakes. And just the other day uh, with Max, it kind of showed me that I've gotta be on point, right? Like I can't just assume, I've always gotta be cautious and aware of their body movements and their language. Uh, the snake will speak to you. It will let you know if it wants to be held or not. Retics are a little bit different in that fashion is that when I go to get one of these beautiful retics out, sometimes they will strike at me because you go by their enclosures and they think it's feeding time. The boas, on the other hand, aren't so uh, cage defensive or don't have the same feeding response as the, uh, as the retics do. So they're a lot easier to get out, they're a lot easier to handle. And really when I'm handling a boa constrictor, I can sit, I can watch TV, I can hang out, I can, I can be very immobile. Retics, very different story. The retics want to be crawling around, they want to be mobile, they want to get into everything. So it's, it's for me, it's important that when I'm handling the retics, I'm standing up, I'm letting them do what they want to do. Uh, they're just very curious, inquisitive, and explorative animals. Whereas the boa constrictor just kind of wants to not be lazy so much, but Coconut is not one that really wants to travel or, or you know, get way out of range. He's just gonna lock onto me and kind of cruise around me a little bit and lock me up so I can't move my hands and things like that. So, uh, but coconut also shed, I don't know if I mentioned that or not, coconut shed about two weeks ago. So I just want to get him some camera time and show him and just show you what a beautiful, huh, I love this guy so much. Just a beautiful animal. Now, are snakes safe animals? Right here I've got Georgia. Georgia is the largest snake that I have in my collection. She's probably close to eight feet long. I haven't really measured her, but she is a very long animal. Not a very large animal, but a very long animal. And she is the one that has had more uh, attempts at striking me when I go to the glass to get her out than any of the other retics in the room. Now. I remember the very first time that I owned a retic uh, in the last couple of years and that happened and when I bought her she was not striking at anything. You could really just go in, get her out, handle her, have a great time with her. It was cool. And then I got her home, put her in a new enclosure and all of a sudden she was striking the glass and it scared the living daylights out of me. I called my friend and said, I don't know if I can do this, you know, and she said, you got to walk through it. You've got to be able to use your hook get her into a different mode and then get her out. So from that point to what I have now, especially my, my uh, relationship with Cora, uh, I have really relied and learned how to use the hook. So Georgia is the one that she has definitely struck at me the most, but it's only because she's had a super strong feeding response. Usually if I open up this enclosure, her head is right there by that hide. If I get anywhere near this enclosure, her head is right by that hide which it's not now. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get her out without any issues, I know that. But I'm gonna show you what I do because she's a retic and she's a fairly large retic at that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take her hide and I'm gonna open it towards me. So if she does lunge, 
she's hitting the plastic. So what I do is I take it, I go like this, create the shield, and there she is. So her hook is right here. And what I'm gonna do is just give her a little rub. I do not tap the snakes with the hook. What I wanna do is just get her into a different position. Um, she's looking right at me, so, but right now I'm pretty sure, yeah, see that? So what I'm gonna do is just gonna go underneath her, I'm gonna pull her out, there we go. That's what I was looking for. I can usually tell exactly when it's good to get her out. Um, I think I was a little bit premature on getting her out in the first place, but here she is. This is such a beautiful, beautiful reticulated python. She's such a gentle, gorgeous animal. And you know, when you have a snake this big and it's got a head as big as, as, as uh, Georgia has, a lot of people will become uh, frightened, fearful, scared of a, a snake this big. And for me, she doesn't show me any signs of threat, uh, aggression or anything like that. Uh, this is an animal that I really can just kind of let her do what she wants to do, uh, except when she's trying to get on the enclosures behind me. And, and I can pretty much trust that she's not gonna latch onto my neck or my back or anything like that. She's going to just basically use me as a gym. And right now she is trying to get into the enclosures behind me. So I'm gonna try and wrap her back around this way. I guess she's okay, she's fine. Uh, but anyways, uh, this snake right here is absolutely probably one of the safest snakes I have and that I trust. And, and again, what do I mean by safe? I mean that uh, I trust that the snake, as long as I'm keeping an eye on it, as long as I am watching what she does, that she is not gonna try to attack me. She is not going to try. <laughs> she is not going to try and hurt me. Uh, she's not gonna try and eat me. Uh, she's gonna do what a snake does and she wants to climb. She just wants to wrap herself around. And like I said, the difference between, in my opinion, the retics and the boas is the retics are very, very inquisitive and curious and they will try to get to places as far, as far as they can reach. They will use you as the secured anchor and try to reach out as far as they can. So to me, I mean, that's kind of the thing I love about the retake is it's securing itself to me and it's, it's showing that it's got some safety in me. It's got some trust in me. It's, it's allowing itself to use me as the secure to try to get somewhere different. And, uh, when, you know, when you've got a snake, a smaller retake, like, you know, Georgia is here at eight feet long, uh, it's, it's kind of neat to let them go and do what they want to do. And, you know, it's kind of a fun, playful thing when she wraps her head around my head or she wraps her body around my, around my head and she's just, then she just parks herself there, you know? So I, I get a lot of enjoyment and I think it's really just the bond and the, the relationship, whether she has it with me, I know I have it with her. Yeah, and I love this animal to death. So, you know, big head, big snake, you know, not a very large body, but a very long body. She poses no threat to me. She's, she's a safe animal. Uh, and, you know, I have no problem handing this animal to my 11 year old granddaughter so that she can handle her. Now focus over here on this one right here. Here's Cora. Cora is, she's like the most, like, I don't know how to explain it. She's, she wants my attention. Soon as I walk in this room, she could be under her hide. She knows I've walked in and she starts doing this right here. Now what she's doing, in my opinion, is she's saying, hey dad, check this out. I'm here, I wanna be held too. And I get this at 5 a.m. I get this at 4 a.m. when I get up in the morning. 
Uh, I come in here just to do a spot check on everybody, see how everybody's doing. As soon as I open up this door, she comes right to the glass. So this is one of the things for me that where it's really important that I have to keep an eye on her. Even though I trust her and I love her and I, I personally don't think that she would hurt me, there's always that chance. So what I'm going to do with her is I'm going to open up her glass. She comes right out. She comes right out. Now, the one thing I'm not going to do is put my hand anywhere in front of her because it's that kind of action where she, she gets, she bites, and then she latches. And that's, that's a feeding response bite. So what I do is I take the hook, and she's very, very accustomed to this. I'll just rub her, her little bottom with it, you know, right under her chin. And I'm going to give her a little bit of time to come out. Right now, I absolutely don't believe that she's in a feeding response. But I'm not going to take the chance. They never will take the chance. So what I do is I'll come over here. Let's get her. And she's good. Yes. Cora shed not too long ago also. And if you've been watching my videos, you've seen me post about Cora, how she was when I first got her. She is absolutely a completely different animal from the time I unboxed her. Uh, and she continues to grow and bond with me. She's absolutely gorgeous. She was produced by Chris McVicker at New Shed Serpents. And um, this is the first animal that I've ever had to like, like earn a relationship with. She is, I mean, she tried, she did bite me. She bit my thumb. Uh, she took a strike at my wife. She struck at air, right? And I was afraid of her. And, and now look at her. I mean, she is just so gentle and she's inquisitive. She absolutely doesn't show any signs or any um, wants to uh, be defensive or aggressive or anything like that. I don't like to call snakes aggressive because I don't think they are. I think they're defensive. They're scared. They're just as afraid of us as we are of them. So, but it took time and it took a lot of patience. It took a lot of commitment for me working with her to get to that point where we have a beautiful, wonderful relationship. And this is an animal that took a swing at my wife, right? And, and, I, and I had to get pictures of my wife holding her because that's all it took was just consistency in handling her and showing her that I'm not gonna hurt her, you know? Uh, that I, I, that I want to be her friend. And it was like short 15 minute handling sessions. And I wanted them to end on a positive note. And for the most part, they did. They really, truly ended on positive notes. So, uh, this right here, I, I, it's every snake I pull out, I'm going to tell you is safe. Even Max, cause I'm going to pull Max out too. And I had Max out earlier and I really don't like to take my snakes out more than once a day, but I'm going to do that just for the sake of because I can and I'm not afraid of Max. So uh, here is Cora. Before I put her back, she is just an absolutely beautiful Phantom Platinum 50% Kalatoa Super Dwarf. 20 pounds of cocoa husk on the floor later, we have Max out. And again, Max took a pretty good swing at me the other day, got me off guard. I was a little startled by it. And, uh, and you know, sometimes I got to watch, you know, does he want to come out? And he was really exhibiting that he did not want to come out of his enclosure. I mean, that was pretty, pretty evident of what he was doing. Uh, and he grow, he's trying to grab onto everything. He was trying to grab onto the cocoa husk. He was trying to grab onto his water dish. So, you know, this is the sign that I take that maybe he didn't want to be out. Maybe he doesn't want to be messed with right now. So if I was to take a bite from him, it's probably because I'm asking for it. You know, I pulled him out and he was kind of saying, hey, you know, check it out. I don't want to be out right now. But 
Right now he's wrapping around my wrist. Uh, he's, he's doing okay. So, but I'm not gonna hold him out for very long. But what I do wanna show is that when A, we do get struck at or we do take a bite from our animal, we have to take a look at what did we do wrong? Or I take a look at what did I do wrong? What, what happened with me that I didn't see with the animal that caused that to happen? Snakes don't just bite people because they, they feel like biting people. There's, there's something going on. There's something going wrong. And that's the only way that the animal has to show that, hey, I'm unhappy and I don't want to be handled right now. So it's up to us as keepers to read our animals, to check out what's going on, and to you know make an informed decision from that point. Is it a good idea to pull that animal out or not? So he's doing okay right now, and uh, I love this guy to death. He's a good guy. He, uh, I think I just got him on a bad day, but it happens. You can have a dog and it can bite you. You can have a cat, it can bite you, uh, and you can have a snake. And each of these animals is trying to talk to us and say, hey, you know what? Something's wrong right now. I don't feel like being handled. So my reptiles, they're safe animals. They're wonderful pets. I wouldn't change anything about what I have. Um, it's really about me and how do I keep my animals? Because how I keep my animals is going to dictate how my animals respond to me. So you guys, thanks for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. This guy is a heavy beast. So I'm going to put him away and uh, look for the next video. I appreciate it. Thanks.